Hey everybody, welcome to my Stu Stu studio here. This is where I edit all the videos that you watch on my channel. And it's been a while since I offered any tips. So I don't know where everybody's skill level is, so I'll just share with you a few of the things that I learned in Premiere Pro along the way that um, I had to learn the hard way or that I have never seen anyone else show you. There'll be a few shortcuts and some audio things and uh, then I will juggle flaming chainsaws. <laughs> Doug on it, I just checked the chainsaws, they're out of gas. So I'll have to offer you some unseen drone footage maybe at the end. All right, come on, let's go. What you're looking at here is the last video that I posted, the one about Nashville. Hey Dana. Hey. hey. Are you a member of the Grand Old Ploffery? <laughs> now that's just funny. I don't care who you are. But I'll show you a little thing that you can do here that might help if you're editing 4K video and you want to give yourself a little bit more power. So go up to File, Export. This is how I export, by the way. I don't use a separate program. I always do it through Premiere. So you'll see right up in here, this is what it's going to be the output of the video. And you'll see right here that it's 2997 frames per second, even though my drone footage is shot at 60 frames a second. What I've done is I've brought each one of my clips down here into this window to edit. The first clip I brought down, and I'll show you, let's say we're just starting a new sequence, and this can be anything anything at all just click OK you'll have a new sequence the potty part that you just saw was shot 30 frames a second 4k so I'll drag that down here and you'll get a message do you want to adjust yes change that so then this will match the frame rate and everything else from your 30 frames a second video so this window right here that you're editing with is set by the footage you dragged in from your 30 frames a second camera. If you want to bring in another camera, the drone footage that was shot at 60 frames a second, you put that in your sequence window here, it will be set at 30 frames a second. And you can edit this at 30 frames a second put it all together like I did here this is the entire project and you'll notice if I bring this to the front and go to export it it will be 30 frames a second even though I want it to be 60 frames a second here's where the tip comes in so it's a lot easier for your computer to edit 30 frames a second than it is 60 frames a second but when you go to render it, you want to open up a new sequence, click OK on whatever, then bring down a piece of footage that has 60 frames a second into it. It will ask you, do you want to change the sequence settings? Yes. So this sequence is set at 60 frames a second, and that is what you want to render to. So Delete that little bit of footage right there, and then go over here to the first sequence, Control A if you're using Windows, and then drag and drop the entire project into there. Now you can see it's a lot smoother because it's 60 frames a second and then you just go to file export media and you can see here it has set the entire project to 60 frames a second that way you won't have to use your computer's processing power to edit only to render and then it'll be 60 frames a second that's how I do most of my stuff even though my computer is beefy enough to use 4K at 60 frames a second. Isn't that handy dandy? How about another tip? Okay, and this is the sole reason why I use Premiere Pro from Adobe. 
It's the multicam audio lineup thingamahooser what's it's. This is a video I shot a while back when I was doing the morning show here and I was using multiple cameras. I had one on the wall, one on me, and one on Kelly. And then this was the audio that I got from the radio. I bring that all over here. It imports the files just by dragging and dropping them, conforming the files. You must wait until all of the audio has been conformed. And then, here's the cool part. It will take the audio from the Kelly cam, the Ken cam, and the camera on the wall, and line it up with the audio that we got from the radio. Right click, create multi-camera source sequence. And you can see here you've got a lot of options. You can set it to in points, out points, time code if you're using a time code. But what I want to do is I want to line up all of these clips using the audio. So click OK. It does its premiere magic. And then it created a new sequence for you. Right click, open in timeline. And you can see what it did here. I'll make this. Uh, bigger so you can see it. <clears throat> it automatically muted these. It took, this is audio from one camera, two cameras, three cameras, and the radio. And it lined them up. So what I can do is I can remove the crappy audio from the cameras by uh, unlinking it and then deleting it then I can go back to the regular window oh yeah that's right because you've given your two-week notice and you're leaving us and <laughs> this was actually one of the last in fact the last day that Kelly and I recorded a video for because he then went to do real estate I'm not bitter so it has lined up these clips with the audio that we recorded separately. And this would be like from a lapel mic or another audio source. And one of the genius things that Premiere does is select all, right click, nest, where's nest? Nest, you can just let it call that. And then it puts them together in this single video file, unlink, I know I'm going kind of fast. Again, I don't know what your skill level is on this, but I'll just show you what I do. Then I right click on here, go up to multi camera, enable. All right. Then you go over to the settings in the preview window, click on multi camera, and it brings up each camera, and they're all lined up. Left me on, out in the lurch. No, I meant no. because you'll try and kill me with some kind of poisonous food. No, I wouldn't do that. Okay. I've got a food for Ken to try. He's got a food for me to try. You first or me first? Oh, you go first. I need to go first. That way. See, now you can see just by clicking on those windows, it created edits. <laughs> and it switched the camera for you. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I need to go first. That way I'm alive for my food to give you. Right? Now, you can see that the color is uh, kind of messed up, and I would go in before I nested the sequence and uh, mess with the color on each clip. But that's basically how it's done. I'm not sure if other programs like Sony Vegas or uh, other programs will do that, but it's the sole reason why I have been using Premiere, because it lines up the sequences for you. On to the next tip. All right, we'll continue to use this as an example. If you want to make a video edit independently of your audio, you want to make sure that these are unlinked. These are unlinked. You can relink them if you want. You can hit link and then when you take your razor blade and you edit, it will make edits on both the audio and the video as you can see right here. It has done that. So, if that's the case, and you want to make an edit on your audio, you want to 
unlink that and say I wanted to change you like bugles yes oh you're gonna love this all right if I wanted to change some of that audio like say just in here you could take the razor blade just so that make a smaller section to edit just so that uh, it won't use up your uh, CPU that much. So then right click on here and go up to render and replace. When sequences are nested, you want to render and replace first. Then it'll be a slightly different color, as you can see here. It, it creates another WAV file that's independent of these other ones. It makes for better audio editing. So if I wanted to change... You like bugles? Yeah. Like if I said a bad word or something there, I could right click here on this audio, edit clip in Adobe, Adobe Audition, and it brings up I saw it yesterday. You like bugles? this file. I love the Adobe family of programs. They all work together. You can interchange them. You can, uh, when you're editing video, you can edit stills in Photoshop and so on and so forth. But if I wanted to change. You like bugles? Yes. All right, let's say I wanted to take this and make it sound like I said a dirty word. Yeah. Highlight that part, go up to effects, generate, tones, and you can create a beep. Googles. Oh, you're going to love this. Right? And then save this, close it, and then boom, it has done that for you. You like bugles? Oh, you're gonna love this. <laughs> there are so many other things that I can show you. Again, I don't know your skill level. I don't know where you are in uh, editing. I'm just showing you a few things that that I learned that helped me. So I'll show you my rendering procedure. Uh, file, export, media, and then I go here. You want to make sure that you have all of your codecs installed and Premiere will come with YouTube codecs that will make the video look great on YouTube and you have your choice here. Um, I only use these two. This wasn't shot in 4K so I use a 1080. And I come over here and pick out where I want it. I'll just call it test. And then you can see, uh, it's pretty much ready to go. I never check this, in case you're wondering. It doesn't seem to matter. Of course, you want to have your audio and your video things checked right here. It does that by default. Uh, have this on H.264, which is what YouTube uses. That's pretty much the standard. And then, export. And then it's done. You like bugles? Oh, you're going to love this. Maybe. And that's it. There you go. There's a few tips for you. If you have any specific questions uh, about editing or audio or life, just put it in the description and I'll try to answer as best I can. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And until next time, buh. And bye. Oh. Well, that was a good, that was a good show. Oh, yeah, that's right. I promise you some drone footage you haven't seen before. Here you go. This is footage I shot with my buddy Jason of Huntsville, Alabama. Yes, I'm flying at night. That's naughty. Well, not in 2015, which is when this was shot with my Phantom 3 Professional. Yeah, some of you may remember the wild, wild west of drones when you could fly anywhere, do anything. I've been hanging on to this footage for a while, mostly because I didn't know what to do with it. Doesn't make a lot of sense. It's just two dudes flying their drones around the city. We're up on top of a parking garage, but there is one interesting part. Jason was at a party earlier that night 
and he told the party goers that he was gonna fly his drone over to the window and take their picture with the drone later on. So he did just that. Again, this is something that you can't do now. You shouldn't do ever, really. I mean, unless you know the people inside like Jason did. They were fascinated with it. Again, this is 2015. Drones are still fairly new to most people. Certainly a drone that visits a party on the like eighth floor or whatever. Three months after this, Jason took this very drone to New York City and accidentally crashed it through the window of a church. <laughs> he no longer has his drone, but we're still friends. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Buh and bye, my friends.